What's the best treatment for under eye circles? Bags, purple color. I'm 37. I've always had bags under my eyes. They look the same regardless of diet, amount of sleep, etc. What makes them look especially bad is the purple color and that they're asymmetrical. My right eye is far puffier and purpler than the left. I'm even asked every once in a while if I have a black eye. Thank you for your question. You submitted two photos and you're asking what's the best treatment for um, under eye puffiness and purple color and you've uh, described that one eye is worse than the other and that occasionally you're asked if you have a black eye. Well, I can certainly assist you with this question. I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic surgeon uh, practicing in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and under eye bags is one of the most common issues we deal with in our practice. So I think I can help you understand what your situation is and how we approach um, people like yourself who come to our practice. To begin with, let's understand what the puffiness is. The puffiness represents something called lower eyelid fat prolapse. Lower eyelid fat prolapse means that the fat that's normally around the eyes pushes forward creates a bulge and is constantly there. It can be asymmetric and because it's a fat pocket, it's something that's not amenable to topical treatments such as the use of creams or, or anything else. Uh, what we do in our practice for someone like yourself with the photos you presented is we would do something called a lower eyelid transconjunctival blepharoplasty. What that means is we address the fat pockets from the inside of the eyelid, avoiding an external incision, and basically, even with asymmetric bags, which is very typical, um, we can, I can um, actually sculpt appropriately to try to balance out the symmetry as best as is possible. As far as color is concerned, you know, the, the under eye area um, people come into our practice complaining of dark under eye circles, the purplish color, and uh, the reddish color, etc. So to understand this, we have to understand what the layers of the skin and the tissue is all the way down to the bone level. Starting with the top, the skin. The skin can be discolored from sun exposure. It can be discolored from genetics and, and, and hereditary um, effects. It can be also um, discolored uh, a little bit further deeper because the skin is so transparent or translucent that you can actually see the orbicularis muscle, the muscle that's underneath the eyes which is of a reddish hue and you can also have uh, something called allergic shiners which are the result of chronic what's called venous drainage or congestion in, in, the, in the bottom of the eyelids and you get what's called hemosiderin staining. So there's a lot of reasons for discoloration and in our practice when we perform lower eyelid blepharoplasty it's very routine to help the skin quality um, improve using a combination of something called platelet rich plasma which is derived from your own blood and contains the growth factors necessary for wound healing. The intention is, is to try to help add some collagen and improve quality to the skin so it's a little bit less translucent. Uh, in addition, we also routinely do something called fractional CO2 laser. This helps improve the skin texture and quality um, as well as improve some of the fine lines. Now, all of these things don't necessarily have to be done at once and there is an upper limit, especially when you're dealing with the skin because the skin of the lower eyelid is only um, half a millimeter in thickness. So a lot of times we can definitively treat, of course, the puffiness in one procedure, but in order to get the optimal result with the skin, we have to do these PRP treatments maybe once every three to six months, depending on how you respond and what your, your goal is. We, um, in a, in the laser is, is usually done just once, and sometimes we also add some topical treatments of some more um, active ingredient with more active ingredients such as various retinols and things like that. We have our own skincare line in our practice that we do, uh, we customize to help our patients um, look better. So at this point I think it's, uh, it would be uh, suggested 
to, uh, for you to meet with qualified, experienced cosmetic surgeons who do a lot of eyelid surgery and learn about the, some of these options and see if these uh, options make sense for you. It's important that you be comfortable with the doctor. In my practice, I perform my procedures under local anesthesia with light sedation. This is in contrast to doing these procedures under general anesthesia. It has been my experience that patients tend to heal faster, recover faster, feel better after this type of surgery. And we do all our procedures under, in our own office operating facilities in both Manhattan and Long Island, which are certified by the Joint Commission. Again, to make, to optimize patient uh, both safety and comfort by doing work at a hospital level in terms of safety, but in a more comfortable environment in an office setting. Now these are the things that do matter to a lot of people when they're choosing a surgeon for their procedure. So again, a meet with qualified experienced doctors and once you're comfortable with one uh, that you feel will do a good job for you, move forward. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.